Now I can simply double click on that. Remember guys, we've done all of this over RF. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click OK for the defaults. And there's that data that took 11 seconds to move over RF. Let's bring radio into the 21st century. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. I'm here with Mike today, KG4 VDK. And we want to talk to you a little bit about how we're moving things forward in our local area to bring radio into the 21st century. Now, Mike is kind of my counterpart in the parade that we will be doing later this year. And he's also the developer of Arc OS, which you're going to want to stick around and learn a little bit more about towards the end of this video. Mike, thanks so much for joining me today. No problem. Uh, now, we both were at the parade last year, and it was kind of our first time being at the parade. So right. we really didn't know what we were walking into. Um, so I, I handled a little bit of APRS last year. This year, we're planning to do a lot more with that. Uh, what did you do last year at the parade? So last year, I showed up and I drank coffee first when we met up. Um, and then I got assigned to the registration area which was a large parking lot away from where the parade actually starts, where everybody gathers and gets all their floats prepared. You know, you don't want to drive all the way from your house to the parking lot with all your stuff flying off. So they get there to the big parking lot, they come by the registration station, and we got to check them off against a spreadsheet that the city has and make sure that everybody that registered is there or we know who's absent and all that kind of stuff. And then we needed to get that information to the local news crew so they can overlay, overlay that on the television as the floats pass by the camera and we can know who is in our local city parade. So that's what I was doing and we found some ways that we think we can make it better. All right, so from registration, you're having to transfer the check-in data, uh, mm -hmm. verify that it's correct, and then send that to net control. How did you accomplish sending that from your location to net control? Because there was about a mile, mile and a half between the two of you. Last year we did that over, I believe we used uh, a temporary UHF repeater, uh, or maybe we did it over VHF, but either way, we did all of that data transfer by voice over the air. Uh, and that'd be fine if we only had 10 people in our parade, but last year we had about 125. And so we were spending wow. a really long time transmitting over the air. Wow, so 125 participants and you're transmitting all of that over voice. Correct. Spelling corrections, uh, updates to organization names and phone numbers and all that kind of stuff all over the air. So then net control is putting that into a spreadsheet that they're providing to the TV crew. Correct. Okay. So we kind of had an after action report between me and you after the fact, trying to figure out how we could improve this. Mm -hmm. So my side, we're going to be tracking a lot more assets on APRS and giving the, um, the people in charge of the parade access to that data over APRSI, APRS.FI. How have you improved the registration side? Uh, we are attempting to remove pen and paper altogether and do this actually as data transfer. So instead of using a spreadsheet that's printed out and checking things off, we're going to create that spreadsheet using a localized web server there at registration. We're going to have a local Wi-Fi network. Um, so our volunteers there at registration can attach their phone to that Wi-Fi network, attach to this web server, enter, modify, delete, uh, entrant information and then that station there at registration will be able to transfer that data over FL Digi using FL AMP will it be able to transfer that CSV comma separated value file straight to net control already in spreadsheet form that they can pass along okay now you said something in there uh, kind of earlier on that bothers me a little bit okay you know that my channel kind of is notorious for focusing on MCOM okay and you said web server. So that means we're going to be running all of this online over the internet? Negative. Uh, this is a local area network. So it's a Wi-Fi router, meaning that you've got a, an address you can connect to on your phone or your computer, but there's no internet back into it. It's just like if the internet goes out at your house, but the power stays on, you can't reach Google, but other net maybe your printer is still on your local network so you can still print when the internet's out because it's on your local network but you just don't have internet access so this will all be internet less localized wi-fi router 
Okay, and you've built this web server and will be running it there locally, right? Correct. That's pretty slick. So you got to give me a quick demo of how we're going to uh, log on to this Wi-Fi and how we're going to enter this data. And then I want you to walk me through the back end because this has got to be difficult on the back end. Uh, it, difficult, mm, it can get a little complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Uh, and it's made in a way that other clubs could modify this and use it for, for any purposes, whether that's a parade or maybe uh, a bike race or something. Yes, it says parade is involved, but the, the data capturing fields could easily be changed to match whatever needs another club has. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I could use this that you've written uh, to get take input from any kind of event, mm -hmm. whether that was bike race, marathon, or checking people into a shelter. Absolutely. That's pretty cool. All right, you got to give me this demo. All right, Let grab your gr phone and we'll hook up to the Wi-Fi router. I'll follow along with you and that way we can show one of the things I wanted to do with this was show how um, multiple volunteers can be connected at the same time to this web server and be entering, like if you're entering the first vehicle that's shown up, so they'll have a placard in their vehicle and they're number one and I'm working on number two, you can be entering yours at the same time I'm entering mine and we shouldn't have any conflicts. Okay, so what is the uh, Wi-Fi SSID that I'm looking for? Uh, it is named SRARC, Stones River Amateur Radio Club, and then the password for it is SRARC, all lowercase, okay. 7373. Okay, and it looks like I am connected. Now, I understand I need to navigate to a specific address. Is that an IP address or? Because we're using this local router and it handles what's called domain name resolution, it knows the host name of that computer. So that computer is named arcos.local. You should just be able to browse to arcos.local. Uh, and if I can spell it right, it will probably help. I that need does an matter. O right there instead of an I. Let's see what happens here. Wow, popped right up first try. So I've got four cool buttons here. Uh, view all, add, modify, and delete. So I'm assuming I'm going to hit the add. Yeah, let's e go ahead and add one a piece. E and so I'm going to take placard one. And I'll take two. Even a slow guy like me can figure out which button to press on this. So what we're needing to put in here is the placard number. Uh, then we're looking for the organization name, the contact person name for that organization, uh, a phone number for them, and then we're checking and asking them, how many vehicles did you bring to the parade this year? How many trailers do you have? And then how many people do you have walking? Um, and then any notes that need to go with that, we'll go ahead and put those in there as well. Um, and then once you've got all your information in there, you hit add at the bottom of your form and it should already be on the web server. All right, I've got mine in, you've got yours in? Mine's in. All, All right. right, before we jump over and take a look at the back end, let's tell folks a little bit more about ArcOS sure. and the way this is running. Now, a brief explanation, if you will, is this is a live image of Linux running on a thumb drive. Correct. Meaning I don't have to install it on my hard drive. I can just boot this from the USB device and have all of this running. And you've even included what uh, we're calling, or you're calling, the parade module mm -hmm in ArcOS. So if I just load that module, I would have all of this available to me. Is that right? That's correct. All right. And guys, I will leave some links down in the description below. Mike's got a website, he's got a YouTube, uh, and, and he's got a forum, and he's got several tutorials that will walk you through how to do what we're doing out here in the field today. Let's go ahead and take a look at that back end. All right. All right. So you've got your laptop set up here in the field. Give me an idea of what this looks like on the back end. And guys, we'll go ahead and jump to uh, screen capture on his laptop so you can follow along. All right. So we had both already entered in a couple entries here. So this is just looking at the same web interface. We're just on the machine that's actually running the web server now. But I can view all and I can see that Jason has entered placard number one, the organization name of KM4ACK. They're bringing one vehicle, one trailer, 14 walkers. We've got a phone number here for Jason that's actually a clickable link if we needed to 
call Jason with that non-existent, non-real, don't actually try to call him and get support <laughs> phone number. Uh, and then I've entered in placard number two for Beverly's Beauty Shop, and we've got their information here for one car, no trailers, five people walking, her phone number, and no notes here. So that's the ones that we've entered right now. So that's how that got captured on the back end and is now displayed if you need to go through that. What you could be able to do with this also, yeah, they're all listed just in one row, but let's say somebody walks up and asks, hey, do you know where I can find Beverly's Beauty Shop float? I'm running late and I need to get caught up with them. Well, we've got our phone number and we've got our placard number, so we probably know whereabouts they are, but let's say there's 120 things on here and I can't find them. Just like any browser, we can use find and page. Control F, start typing Beverly, and it'll find that for us and would automatically scroll to that on the page. So if you just need to find something real quick, you can just start typing some very basic uh, characters that you know are going to be associated with that and pull them into there. That's pretty slick. Now, how hard is it to take all of this data that you've captured and get it to that CSV file? Uh, it's one click, one double click. One double click. Yeah, so right. we've got our two entries in, already in there. If I come over here to this parade, generate parade CSV launcher, if I just double click that, boom. We now have our parade CSV. We can open it up, take a look at it, see what we've got in it. So this is the LibreOffice spreadsheet application called Calc. We can just select the defaults here. But it's a standard CSV. Standard so it'll, CSV. It'll, it'll open in Microsoft Excel just fine. Uh, it's it's the, the least formatted way to transmit spreadsheet data. So we've got both of the entries that we put in there with all the information we included for them right there and ready to go. Nice. All right. Now, I have a receive station set up, so let's go ahead and watch you transmit this data, and I'll watch it coming in on my computer. Okay. So I will first need to open up FL Digi because that's the, the back end for how this gets transmitted. And then we'll use FL Amp to actually do the transmission. Um, we'll try to save a little bit of time. We'll do it in BPSK 500. So I come to transmit in FL Amp. And when I hit add, not only was that spreadsheet file added to the desktop, but it's also linked into the FL Amp directory that gets looked into when you're ready to transmit so you don't have to go browsing for it it's already right here now that's pretty sharp making it easy on us so i've got that in there uh fl amp says that this will take about 11 seconds to transmit so we'll go ahead and send it out all right so on my end i see that i have the file right here i'm just going to click save we'll go ahead and click on the desktop and we'll save that csv file right there now i can simply double click on that Remember guys, we've done all of this over RF. Uh, we'll just go ahead and click OK for the defaults. And there's that data that took 11 seconds to move over RF. So that only took us 11 seconds, but we were only working with two entries. So if you're talking about doing 125, I mean, this is gonna be what, 15 minutes to transmit? Uh, well, luckily in FL Amp, you do have the option to use compression. Um, we didn't need to use it there, it was only 11 seconds and it's the smaller file size compression doesn't always help. Uh, I haven't tested 125 entries, I have tested 200. Okay. Uh, at 200 entries using the MT63 2KL mode, every single entry having a note that goes with it and all that kind of stuff. In the MT63 2KL mode, it would take about a minute and 59 seconds with compression turned on. So two minutes to transfer 200 entrants. Correct. In a spreadsheet. And I bet you or I, neither one, can read that fast over the air if we have to do it um, with our voice. Nope, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I can't, I can't pull that <laughs> off. Okay, so now one more question because some guys may not like FL Digi, and that's okay. What if I wanted to do that CSV file with WinLink over a peer-to-peer -peer connection? Is that possible? It's possible, uh, depending upon what your your gateway or if you're doing peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, your packet throughput. I've not tested what it would actually take to get a file that size through over WinLink, but as long as it falls under the file attachment size that is allowed there, or if that's even a problem at the peer-to-peer -peer level, it should be no issue getting it sent. It just may take longer than an FL Digi. Cool. Mike, I appreciate you taking some time with me today. Hey, no problem. Guys, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you on the next one. Until then, 7-3.